The Satsuma mandarin is a citrus fruit grown in Japan's warmer regions. This fruit was born in Japan around 500 years ago. Its perfect blend of sweet and sharp is loved by the Japanese, who consume 60 satsumas per person per year. Once prized as orange diamonds, satsumas eventually faced stiff competition from imported oranges. Japanese production shrank. But satsuma farmers didn't take this lying down. Methods that produce sweeter fruit, as well as techniques for accelerating the satsuma harvest, have helped growers to adapt to a changing market. Scientists have also learned about a healthy compound in the satsuma mandarin and have been working to boost its quantity inside the fruit. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is satsuma mandarins. By looking at this iconic fruit, we'll find out more about food in Japan and the state of Japanese agriculture. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. I know what you're thinking. Why is this table wearing a skirt? Well, this table is called a kotatsu, and it's a quintessential part of winter in a traditional household in Japan. Underneath the table is an electric heater, and the futon here keeps the heat under the table. There's only one problem. There's something missing from this picture, something that always goes with a kotatsu, and that is this. Satsuma mandarins, which are also a quintessential part of winter in Japan. It looks like an orange, but it's kind of smaller and softer and cuddlier. It also peels very easily. You just stick your thumb in the top and there you go. It comes away really quite simply. I'm not making too much of a mess here. And you can just pull it apart and... Mm. That's really nice. It's sweet, but it's a kind of delicate sweetness. It's not as dynamically sweet as a Western orange. And there's a slight tartness to it, but not really sour in the way that a lemon or a grapefruit would be. It's a taste that the Japanese love. And we're going to start off today with a look at how these things are grown. Satsuma mandarins are grown along the warm coasts of the Pacific Ocean and the Seto Inland Sea on slopes with good drainage. Annual production is about one million tons. About half of that comes from Wakayama, Ehime and Shizuoka. In May, white flowers bloom on Satsuma mandarin trees. The fruits grown in the open air are traditionally harvested between September and December. Nowadays, however, many Satsuma mandarins are grown in greenhouses, allowing them to be eaten almost year-round. Satsuma mandarins have no seeds. They're propagated by grafting. A notch is cut into a stump with living roots and a branch cutting is wedged into it. After one year, the cutting will have fused to the base and grown into a healthy Satsuma mandarin tree. All the Satsuma mandarin trees in Japan originate from a single ancestor. This means they are all clones of each other, genetically identical. Satsuma mandarins have spread in this way all across Japan, but it takes a lot of effort to get that perfect balance of sweetness and acidity. First, the trees are pruned before they flower. Excess branches are trimmed to keep the tree from getting too bushy. Once the tree begins to fruit, it's thinned. If all the fruit were allowed to ripen, individual fruits wouldn't grow very large. This process is repeated many times before harvest. When the fruits left on the tree are large enough, the amount of water given to the tree is cut to a minimum. 
Many citrus trees concentrate nutrients in their fruit when they aren't getting enough water. This process boosts the satsuma's sweetness. Satsuma mandarins are all hand-picked. Each fruit is carefully snipped off with a pair of pruning shears so as not to damage it. Satsuma mandarins harvested by various farming families are taken to a shipping facility. This is where the oranges are graded. Their size, colour and sugar content are carefully measured. Sugar content is measured with optical sensors. By measuring the amount of infrared light absorbed by sugars, the sweetness of each satsuma can be determined. Satsumas are classified for shipping into as many as 36 different grades, based on size, colour and sugar content. A combination of painstaking work by farmers and state-of-the-art grading ensures that shops are stocked with satsumas that look beautiful as well as taste delicious. Satsumas are usually eaten fresh, but there's another popular way of enjoying them in summer which is to freeze them first. Satsuma mandarin sushi, which uses rice that has been cooked in satsuma mandarin juice, is a local favourite in Ehime. Satsuma mandarins also boast a long history of use as both a spice and a medicine. Dried and powdered satsuma zests were used for these purposes. Satsuma mandarin zest is one of the seven components in a popular Japanese spice blend. Here is a Satsuma mandarin bath, with the fruit floating in the bathwater. A certain compound found in the peel is said to promote circulation, and citric acid and vitamin C beautify the skin. Satsuma mandarins also contain a large amount of a compound called beta-cryptoxanthin, which is known to help in the prevention of diabetes and other lifestyle-related diseases. Research to boost the amount of this substance in satsumas even further is currently underway. Delicious and good for the health, the satsuma mandarin is a fruit the Japanese can't get enough of. As you can see, I'm in a satsuma orchard, and with me is Mr. Hirofumi Utsunomiya, who's an agricultural advisor. How much fruit is there on, on an average tree? Well, a tree this size may be about 300 mandarins. Satsumas have on years and off years. One year a heavy crop, and the following year, the trees produce fewer flowers in order to stay healthy. This year is an off year, so our expected yield is 90% of what it was last year. My field of vision is totally filled with these uh, mandarins, and I, I'm dying to try one. Can I just pick one off the tree? Sure. Use this pair of shears. Cut the stem slightly above the fruit. Okay. Like here. Is it alright? And now you need to snip off the stem so that it won't damage other mandarins when you put them in a box. Like that? Yep. Yeah. Do the farmers help themselves to their own fruit while they're picking it? Yes, they do. They end up sweating a lot, so they eat their own mandarins to rehydrate themselves while taking a break from work and also to check the flavour. Okay, I want to finish off this. It's going to take a little bit of time. While I'm doing that, you can take a look at the history of satsumas in Japan. At Kitsumoto Jinja, a Shinto shrine in Wakayama, a figure named Tajimamori is worshipped. According to Japanese legend, Tajimamori was dispatched by the emperor to find the fruit of immortality, and he is said to have brought the first citrus fruit to Japan. For this reason, he's still venerated as a patron saint of Satsuma mandarin farmers. The immediate ancestor of today's Satsuma mandarin is the Kunembo mandarin. The Satsuma mandarin is a seedless, natural mutation of this fruit. In 1936, a Satsuma mandarin tree estimated at 300 years old 
was discovered on the island of Nagashima in Kagoshima. It was a product of grafting, and experts speculate that the Satsuma mandarin variety itself dates back an additional hundred years. Before the mid-19th century, the seedlessness of the Satsuma mandarin was considered inauspicious, so the tree was rarely cultivated. But in the late 19th century, it started to be more and more widely cultivated, and the fruit became known throughout Japan as the Unshu Mikan. This name is derived from Wenchu, a famous citrus producing region in China. During the Second World War, Japan suffered from chronic food shortages. Satsuma mandarin orchards were turned into fields for growing tubers, and Satsuma mandarin production plummeted. Once the post-war economic boom began, the situation turned around. As Japan became wealthier, demand for fruit grew, and Satsuma mandarin cultivation exploded. Satsumas commanded such good prices that they earned the nickname Orange Diamonds. At harvest time, special trains carrying Satsumas would run between the fruit growing regions and Tokyo. At its peak, Japan produced 3.66 million tons of Satsuma mandarins per year, four times the figure today. Huge amounts of Satsumas were also exported. They became a staple gift of the Christmas season in Canada, and the Satsuma became a widely known fruit in the West. But the boom years came to an end in 1972. That was the year when Satsuma mandarin prices crashed. There were two key factors, overproduction spurred on by government policy and the liberalization of agricultural imports. But in the midst of this adversity, new types of Satsuma mandarins were identified. They were natural mutations that bore fruit early. Satsumas that reached the market earlier commanded premium prices. The discovery of these new types gave growers hope. In recent years, improved cultivation techniques and thorough quality control have led to Satsumas sold under premium brand names that consumers will pay high prices for. Guess what? Another Satsuma orchard. This one belongs to Mr. Ikuhiro Matsuda, who's standing here with me. How long have Satsumas been growing here? Around here, for 120 years. Personally, I've only been doing it for 35 years. It's a pretty impressive place you have here. I love these walls, all hand-built by the look of them too. That's right, they were built by hand during my grandfather's time. I've been told something about there's three suns. Yes, the sun in the sky, the sun reflecting off the sea, the sun bouncing off these stone walls, the three suns. Together, they make our mandarins even more delicious. Are your orchards devoted entirely to satsumas? No. Besides satsumas, we make some other kinds of citrus fruits too. They're over there. Want to see them? These are decapons. Ah, OK. Satsumas are already quite ripe looking. These ones are still pretty green. What's the season for these? March is the best time to eat them. And have you always grown other kinds of citrus as well as satsumas? In the 1970s, satsuma production exploded and prices went down. So that's when we started growing other kinds of citrus fruits. Japan actually does have a surprising variety of different kinds of citrus fruits. Let's take a look. There are around 900 different varieties of citrus fruit in the world. About 100 are grown in Japan. And with the exception of the tachibana and the flat lemon, all of them are either of foreign origin or they are the result of selective breeding. They include citrus species used in cooking like yuzu, kabosu and sudachi. 
Yuzu peel is shaved into thin pieces and used to add fragrance to food. Kabosu and sudachi are squeezed for their juice and used to dress dishes like fish and udon noodles. Familiar ready-to-eat species include summer tangerine and hassaku orange. Recently, a large species called the pomelo has become very popular. New citrus fruits are created through continuous efforts to create novel hybrids. One major success story from the world of citrus breeding is the unusual looking decopong. The Satsuma mandarin and Trovita sweet orange were crossed to create the Kiyomi. This citrus fruit was then crossed with the Pongkang to create the Dekopong. In a sense, a grandchild of the Satsuma. The Dekopong is easy to peel and eat and quite sweet. Its delicious flavour is now enjoyed by millions. But bringing this hybrid to market took years of effort. Michi Sakashita was a pioneer of Dekopong growing in Kumamoto. He currently ships 30 tons of the fruit per year. Sakashta began growing decopons in 1983, when the summer tangerines he had been growing until then suffered a price collapse. Sakashta decided to switch crops. He received 170 different citrus plant seedlings from both Japan and abroad for trial plantings, and that's when he discovered the decopon. When I saw the shape of the fruit, I was skeptical. But they're delicious, they smell great, and they're easy to eat too. I realized just how good they were. The decopon was developed by a Nagasaki fruit research laboratory in 1972. But they were hard to grow and for the first decade, no farmer planted them. But Sakashta was so taken with the flavour of the decopong that he decided to bet his orchards on it. He began cultivating the trees right away, but he wasn't able to grow fruit that was consistently sweet. Some years he got nothing but sour fruit, Sakashta carefully reviewed the cultivation journal he had been keeping. He found that in rainy summers, when summer tangerines and satsumas suffered, decopons were actually sweeter. Could the amount of water be influencing the flavour? Sakashta sprang into action. He conducted a series of experiments varying the amount and timing of water delivery. The results showed that the more water the tree received in the summer growing season, the less acidic the fruit would be. This went against conventional wisdom in citrus cultivation. Eventually, in 1991, eight years after he first started growing decopons, Sakashta achieved a stable balance of sweetness and acidity. Finally, he had a fruit he could sell. It took almost 20 years from the creation of the decopong to its becoming established as a popular fruit. The harvest season will be at its peak very soon now, and the whole harvest has to be brought in in the space of just one month, which means that concentrated manpower is required for that period. I'm going to talk to a couple of the local farmers now about how they deal with that. Hello. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Where do you get your workers from for the uh, mandarin picking? We place an ad in employment magazines that are sold in big cities and on the internet, and those who answer our ad come here. And they stay... Uh, at your house? Yes, they do. And we feed them too. That's our responsibility. 
And you'll actually have some workers staying in this house as well, I understand. Oh, I see. It's a traditional Japanese home. And how many people would you have staying in here? Four people are scheduled to come and stay here. Do you have the same people coming back every year? Yes. As a matter of fact, most of them are repeat visitors. So it's a bit like summer camp, except they come in the winter, right? We drink together, we eat together. It's hard work, but they come here to have some fun too. Thank you very much. All right, next let's take a look at an example of one young man who's involved in a corporate-run farming enterprise. Ikata, a Cape Town on the western edge of Ehime. Today there's a superhero show in town. I am the Satsuma Mandarin Ranger. What, you haven't heard of the Satsuma Mandarin Ranger? Actually, the show is a promotional event put on by a fruit growing company. And the part of the ranger is played by Hiroshi Matsuyama. He works for a company in Ikata that grows and sells fruit. The company's main product is Satsuma mandarins. It has 25 employees. Matsuyama has been with the company for seven years and leads its production unit. Most of his fellow employees are newcomers with less than two years' experience. Let's give it our all today. Yes! Work on the Satsuma mandarin trees starts in April. The company has 12 hectares of orchards, which are tended by the 10-person production team. Matsuyama instructs the junior employees as they prune the trees. Oh, that one's fine. Leave it. Do this one over here. But his boss, the company president Harumitsu Kadota, has been in the business for 30 years. He points out Matsuyama's own mistakes. Look, what is this? Show them the right way to do it. Where Matsuyama's juniors did the pruning, there are still bits of branch that should have been snipped. Oh, I've still got a lot to learn. Matsuyama first became interested in farming as a child, when he had the chance to dig up sweet potatoes. He grew up in Chiba, the son of an office worker, but after high school he attended an agricultural college in Ehime. Most students there came from local farming families. When I first got there, my classmates would say, why did you come here? They'd say, you've got no background in this, you'll never make it. I couldn't stand that. It was tough at first. After graduating, his fellow students followed in their family footsteps, and Matsuyama took a job at this company that grew Satsuma mandarins. But the know-how needed in the orchards cannot be mastered overnight. It's now been seven years since he started working with Satsuma mandarin trees, and he's still learning something new almost every day. This year is an off year. When the yield is low, every mandarin counts. But there's a problem. The weather is wetter than usual, and the fruit has absorbed too much moisture. At this rate, it will not taste good enough to ship. So Matsuyama approaches his boss with a plan. Lay out waterproof sheeting to prevent rain from seeping into the soil. This will limit the amount of moisture taken up by the fruit. Yeah, come on! That's hard work in the heat! But if the production unit all works together, we can do it. Some farming families use this type of sheeting, but it's expensive and requires many people to lay it out. 
These white sheets also reflect sunlight, which helps the fruit develop a nice colour. The work is carried out in blazing heat. The total area of sheeting is about 650 square metres. It's even harder work than I thought it would be. <laughs> Harvest time has come. How will the satsumas taste from the orchards with the sheets? Matsuyama measures the sweetness. 12% or above is an acceptable sweetness. Wow, 15.8%. Matsuyama can't hide his delight. This is incredible. Here, let me taste it. It's good. A delicious satsuma has the power to ease the fatigue from all the year's hard work. For Matsuyama and his young colleagues, the quest to grow tasty satsumas continues. That young man, Mr. Matsuyama, that we saw in the video just now is slightly unusual in that he wasn't born into a farming family, unlike the vast majority of people involved in Japanese agriculture. And perhaps the fact that he was able to think outside the box also has something to do with his background. Japanese agriculture in general faces many problems, perhaps the biggest of which is that the average age of farmers is just getting older and older. Uh, agriculture needs a lot more young people like Mr. Matsuyama to come in to help it survive and thrive. I'll see you again next time. There's a gift for every Japanese season and occasion, including not one but two Valentine's Days. From beautiful wrapping techniques to catalogues of thank you gifts, we explore the Japanese culture of gift giving.